We're Designing Spaces, the show that's all about you and your space, your home and surroundings. I'm Debbie Marie. And I'm David Jones. On Designing Spaces, we take a look at all aspects of your home and property, including lifestyle, so there's plenty to interest homeowners everywhere. So stick around and see it all right here on Designing Spaces. Debbie, ever hear of an automated home? No, but that sounds interesting. Yes, it does. In fact, here's Art Edmonds with the story. The world we grew up in is not the world we live in now. The information age and digital technology have touched every aspect of our lives. Homeowners now have this technology available to create an automated home where comfort and security can be controlled with the touch of a button. To get a better understanding of this life enhancement technology, we here at Designing Spaces are visiting a home that not too long ago would have been considered a house of the future. But this is now, and homes like this are more safe, more secure, and more comfortable than ever. Here on Designing Spaces, we love to do makeovers, but how about a home makeover that gives your house a central nervous system? But this house has had exactly that done to it. Nothing out of the ordinary. Looks totally normal, right? But just wait and see. And to show us, Designing Spaces met up with Kirk McDowell, an expert on residential security systems. So Kirk, tell me a little bit about the concept of the system and how it functions within the house. Well, the heart of the system is really the central unit, which is in the center of the home. All the doors and windows of this home are tied into that. So when the door or the window opens, the homeowner knows if someone's come or left. And when you look at the specifics, it becomes clear. This system is impressive when it comes to protecting windows and doors. We manufacture wireless security devices, and they can take the place of a wired device. So if the door, the window changes, a wire is cut, you simply put one of these sensors up, and it sends a message back to the control panel. Now, what about the exterior of the property? Are there any measures uh, in place for security that way? Yes, this homeowner has opted to put in cameras, both front door and back door. These cameras can see in total darkness. Uh, how about if somebody in the unlikely event breaches the exterior security and gets inside the house, what measures are in place to protect the home then? We manufacture a passive infrared beam that works on a principle of body heat and movement. And when that beam sees somebody moving, it goes into alarm. I will also tell you that the greatest thing about these is that they can be set for pets, whether or not you have a 20-pound pet or an 80-pound pet. So we can adjust those. Okay, we've got the bad guys covered, but there's other dangers. What are life safety alarms and how do they work? 2,600 people were killed last year in uh, structure fires. And the majority of those fires, the smoke detector was not operating. Usually a battery was dead at that point. Mm -hmm. Our smoke detectors do two things. Number one is that in case of a fire, they emit a loud siren to get you out of the home, but they also send a message to the central monitoring station so the fire department can respond. But if the battery starts running low, the central station will call you 7 to 14 days before that battery dies and lets you know that the battery is about ready to go. So how important is CO monitoring, carbon monoxide monitoring, and are they required by the government? Yes, they are. As a matter of fact, 30 states now require CO detection in the home. Very, very important. We call CO detection, or CO, gas, the silent killer. Now, with a CO detection, you should have two or three in the home, and the best place to have it would be in the bedroom at what we call pillow height, on the wall, mounted on the wall, so you can hear it if it goes off. Another aspect of security is the ability to know who's in the house coming and going, being able to check on pets, seniors, and children. Well, we call this our two-way talking touchscreen, and it enables me to install multiple codes for users in the home. So let's say you have a dog sitter coming in to walk your dog. You know exactly how many times they entered your home, and it matches with what they said. It's a great way to keep track of people. It is, and then if I ever change dog sitters, I can simply remove that sitter's code and put in a new code. So run us through the paces of this. You know, activate it, deactivate it, show us around. Sure. Well, I go to bed at night, arm the system. In the morning, I get up, 
I walk downstairs and I want to look at the four-day forecast. So I simply press a button on here on the touch screen. Wow, look at that. And a four-day forecast comes up telling me what the weather is going to be like here. Now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and arm the system and leave the home. All I have to do is to press the button here, arm the whole system, walk out the door, and the doors are immediately going to lock for me. Well, Kirk, we've talked about the security aspect of the system and the life safety aspect of the system. Now, we're here in this office in front of a computer. Tell me about all the things that we can do, adjusting temperatures, turning on lights, turning off lights. What else? Well, you know, at 3 o'clock in the morning, Art, I want my system to act as a security system. But at 3 in the afternoon, I want it to act more as an information system. So here on my desk computer, you can see we're looking at my home right now. I have three cameras set up throughout the home, two outside, one inside, but there's a privacy button, so my wife can simply press that privacy button on the inside camera. I can also change the temperature at the home. I can do that from the computer, or I can simply do it from my tablet. The temperature right now at my home is 74 degrees. It's a little warm, so I'd like to put it and change it down to 71 degrees. So I simply press the down to 71, press the done button, and now all of a sudden, by the time I get home, my temperature is down to 71 degrees. That is great. And everything you can see either on your computer or your tablet, you can see it on your smartphone as well. That's correct. So everything I can do here, I can do on the tablet or I can do on the phone and actually look in to see what's happening in my home and, and right there's now. there's the camera again. You can see it right on your smartphone. That is amazing. Now, a system as sophisticated as this must cost an arm and a leg to install and maintain, no? Well, I have to tell you, in terms of an ongoing fee for monitoring and being able to have access to look in online, it's really no more than your average phone bill. Now, how do we get a hold of you? Well, we have hundreds of authorized Interlogix dealers across the United States that are trained and authorized to install GE-branded security products. And you'd find them by simply going to our website, which is interlogix.com. Kirk, it's been great having you on the show today. And thank you for showing us so much about stuff that we, we didn't even know was out there. It's just amazing. Pleasure, Art. Well, you can learn more by visiting our website, designingspaces.tv, and we'll have links to all the information that we talked about today. You can look at this show or any other past Designing Spaces shows online. Thanks again. I'm Art Edmonds from Lakewood Ranch, Florida. We'll see you later. All right, I don't know about you, David, but my house could use everything we saw in today's show. All right, well, let's see. We got the kitchen remodel. We mm -hmm. got state-of-the-art insulation. Right? We have amazing home automation. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, being we covered everything, I think it's a good time to say goodbye. You're right. We are out of time, but guess what? We have more great subjects for next time, so be sure to be right here. I'm David Jones. And I'm Debbie Marie. We'll see you later. Bye. You can visit these websites to learn more about the participants on this edition of Designing Spaces.